Okay, so today we're going to be looking at what is known as the Carnot cycles. So basically over here, is some, it is something that doesn't look like new, but it's actually very important. So, so far we have seen that we can have the a power cycle. We can have a refrigeration cycle, or we can have a heat pump cycle over here. And all of them did operate between a hot reservoir, which is right over here. Hot, hot, hot. So for the power cycle, the system was getting hot on the refrigeration. This one is being removed, and here this is being removed. And again, we had over here a cold reservoir. So basically for the refrigeration, we would look at this part. And for the heat pump, you will look at this part, okay, of this cycle. But this, uh, and from here, we derive that the efficiency for the power cycle was equal to what? Whatever, oh, whatever you try to get out, which is what over here is. You create power, but this one will actually require work or power in order to work. So let's go back. So what is the efficiency of the power cycle? It's whatever you're trying to get out divided by whatever you put in, which is Q hot minus Q cold divided by Q hot. So this was giving you that the for the power cycle, the performance was 1 minus QC over Q hot. All right, similarly, for this one, the coefficient of performance, what are we trying to achieve for the refrigeration cycle? We are trying to put, to put cold inside the system. And in order to put the cold inside the system, you need to provide work. So here we have the coefficient of performance to be equal to QC divided by Q hot minus QC. Similarly over here, the coefficient of performance for the heat pump, this time what we're trying to achieve is to remove heat from the system. And in order to do that, you need to put work. So this is equal to Q hot divided by Q hot minus Q cold. Okay? So let me just rewrite that equation right here. Q hot, Q hot minus Q cold. All right. So what is the Carnot going to add over here? So Carnot, the only thing that he's saying is that if we assume we have an ideal power cycle, an ideal refrigeration cycle, and an ideal heat pump cycle, this efficiency over here will become what? You can say that the cold reservoir will be at a temperature Tc, that the hot reservoir will be at a temperature Th. So this will be equal to what? 1 minus Tc over T hot. Similarly, the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration will be equal to what? Tc, T hot, minus T cold. And the coefficient of performance for the uh, heat pump will be T hot divided by T hot minus T cold. So believe it or not, this is, these two equations here you will see later on are extremely important because by combining this equation and this equation, that's how we will derive the uh, principle of uh, entropy. Okay, so the derivation to go from here to here 
is basically the same. So I'm just going to do it for the power cycle. Okay, you will see the deletion can be pretty long. So really the important information is this, to realize that for a Carnot cycle, for an ideal cycle, the efficiency will be equal to 1 minus Tc over Th. Basically, you can replace the heat transfers or the heat by the temperature. Basically, what I'm saying is that Qh or Q cold over Qh is equal basically to T cold over T hot. So if you're not interested on the division, you can stop over here. If you're interested on the division of this part, just remain in this video that probably will contain uh, two parts. Okay? All right, so let's get started then. So just like I mentioned, we're trying to derive the expression for the Carnot power cycle. So for the Carnot power cycle, I'm just going to do the same figure as before. This is would be the power cycle that operates between a hot and a cold reservoir. And this actually gives work or power to the system. All right. So in an ideal case, the Carnot cycle, if we do the T B diagram, operates between what? It should operate between two temperatures of reservoir. One hot, so this would be here T hot, and a cold reservoir. Let's say this will be T cold. So now let me just complete the rest of the figure. So if we close the cycle, we might have something like this. Okay. So as you can see, we operate between two temperature reservoirs. Here you will have Q hot coming in. Here you will have the Q core. All right. So I'm going to add couple things before doing the division. So this would be one, two, three, four. So maybe, uh, yeah, maybe let's do it over here. So process one, two will be, so one, two will follow the relation PV equal to a constant. One, two, three, four, sorry for that. Two, three will be a polytropic process, pq to the k. Three, four, again, will be pv constant. And four, one, again, will be pv to the k equal to a constant. All right? So basically, what we're trying to prove is what? That the efficiency of a power cycle operating between two different temperatures. We know it's whatever you try to get out by whatever you put in. This is equal to Q hot minus Q cold over Q hot. So it, or this would be equal to 1 minus Q cold over Q hot. So what I'm trying to show over here is that this is equal to 1 minus T cold over T hot. So this is basically what we are trying to prove. Okay? But still remember this expression. All right. So the efficiency of the Carnot power cycle will be what? Work done during the cycle divided by Q hot. So basically work done during the whole cycle 
So work done doing one, two, plus the work done doing two, three, plus the work done doing three, four, plus the work done doing four, one, divided by two half. All right? So now also from this figure, what do we have? This is T hot, that is also be equal to T2, T1, and T cold will be the temperature for T3, T4. Okay. So basically now we need to find what is the work 1, 2 for, for a PV uh, equal constant process. Same thing for 2, 3, but for polytropic process, and so on, and so on. So let's say this will be our equation A. Let's call it A, capital A. Okay. So So let's look at process one, two. What do we have? We have process one, two. If I do it bigger here, this will be this line over here on the hot. So this is one to two. This is the hot. This is T and V. So we know work one two will be equal to what? Integral of P D V. What do we know about P? We know follow the relation P V equal to constant. So that will mean that P will be equal to C divided by V. So this will give us right away that the work one two equal to the integral C D P over V between V1 and V2, and we know that C could be equal to what? Either P1, V1, or P2, V2. So let's choose P1, V1. So after doing the integration, what we're going to get is that work 1, 2 equal to P1, V1, log V2 over V1. Okay, so this will be our equation Roman 1. We keep doing the same thing. Next, we do process 2, 3. So we have work 2, 3 equal to P dv this time we know it's a polytropic process pv to the k equal to a constant so that we mean that p equal to c over v to the k so this would give us what c dv over v to the k i think it's easier for you to integrate if i just be right under this form dv so this will give you that work to 3 equal to c integral of v oops, v of minus k plus 1 divided by minus k plus 1 between what and what so this will be v2 v3 between v2 and v3 so basically this is going to give us that work 2 3 is equal to what c one minus k of v3 minus k plus one minus v2 minus k plus one Okay, let me just rewrite it on a different form. So this could be equal to 1 over 1 minus.
is k times c v3 minus k plus 1 minus c v2 minus k plus 1. Okay, so here you need to be careful because what do we know? PV to the K equal constant. So we can here use, for example, C, say that will be equal to P3, V3 to the K. And this, this one will be equal to P2, V2 to the K. So after we simplify, we get our work to 3 will be equal to 1 over 1 minus k factor of what p3 v3 minus p2 v2 so this will be our equation 2 Okay, now we keep doing the same thing. Maybe let me add one thing over here. So for 2, 3, this is T, this is P. We're looking at the process 2, 3. Now we'll be looking at the process. Three, four. So again, if I do a quick little figure over here for T and V, this time we go at the bottom, which is three and four. Okay. And which we know that PV equal constant. So work three, four equal P V V where we know that PV equal to a constant. So, same as before, work 3, 4 equals to what? Uh, C, DV over V. So, this would give us at the end what? Maybe I can go a bit faster. Work 3, 4. If we say C equal to P3, V3. We're going to get P3, V3, log of D4 over V3. And we can say that this would be Roman 3. Okay. And next would be process for one so in this case more of the same so if I do a quick figure TV process for one is over here for one so we get work for 1 equal to P D V and this time we know that this will be P V to the K equal to a constant. So I will go a little bit faster since we did it before. So this should give you what? Uh, C integral of V minus K D V. Okay. Between v4 and v1 so this is going to give us c factor of v1 minus k minus v4 sorry, minus k plus 1 minus k plus 1 divided by minus k plus 1 when we substitute C over here by either V1, V1 to the K, 
of P4, V4 to the K, so one over here, the other one over there. What we're going to get is that fork for 1 will be equal to what? To 1 over K to over 1 minus K times P1, P1 minus P4, V4. And this would be equation from and for. So on the next page, what we're going to do is simply say that the total work was equal to work 1, 2, plus work 2, 3, plus work 3, 4, plus work 4, 1, given by the equations Roman 1, 2, 3, and 4. And let's see what happens. So combining so will be one, two, three, and four. What do we get? Work equal to work one, two plus work two, three plus work. P4 plus work for 1. So let me go back to the equations over here. So let's see. Work 1, 2 is equal to P1, V1, log V2 over V1. Plus work to 3 is 1, 1 minus k, p3, v3, minus p2, v2. Work 3, 4 is plus p3, v3, log, v4, over v3 plus 1 over 1 minus k of p1 v1 minus p4 v4 okay so now let's see what happens so this is the question we have so now we can say that for and ideal gas okay or ideal substance okay look at the video basically when I mention the term ideal I mean about a substance that do not change state so we know a gas always remain in the state gas but this equation kind of works sometimes for equation that remain between the same state let's say water remaining liquid or water remaining steam okay so what do we know about the ideal gas relation the ideal gas relation is PV equal to n r t okay this is r bar so we know that equation Now, for example, we can replace what? We replace P1, V1 on the above equation by what? N, R, T1. But what is T1? Let's see if I find the initial figure. So T1 is equal to T2, which will be equal to T hot. So this will be equal to N, R bar, T hot. Okay? The same thing we do, P3, V3 will be equal to what? N, R, T3. But this time, what is T3? T3 is equal to T cold. So this will be equal to N, R, T cold. Okay? 
same thing with P2 V2 and what is T2 is also the hot temperature and 4 would be the cold okay so this will be and I'll part the hot and P4 V4 would be equal to N R T four, which is N R bar T cold. So we substitute if we substitute these equations over here on top, so P1, V1, and so on, what do we get? We're gonna get that the work would be equal to what? N R T hot log v2 over v1 plus 1 divided 1 minus k so maybe i can put here the n r and then here we have just 3 is t called p2 minus t hot then we have plus And R T cold log of V four over V three plus N R one minus K of P one V one would be T hot minus T cold. Okay. So what happens over here, right away you can see that you can cancel this term with this term. So you have that the expression for the work will be equal to what? Um, NR factor of T hot log V2 over V1 plus t cold log v4 over v2 okay so i'm going to stop this video here not to make it too long and and i will continue on another video